Archimandrite Seraphim has been a monastic for decades. In 2015, he was made abbot of Holy Cross Monastery in Wayne, West Virginia, which has seen incredible growth over the past few years. So much so that they have outgrown their, ch their church. So they're currently running a capital campaign to raise money for a new church. If you're able to help, please find the link below this video uh, to their website uh, where you can contribute uh, to this uh, worthy cause. I was recently up at the monastery and uh, Abbot Seraphim kindly carved out some time out of his very busy schedule uh, to conduct this interview. So I'm really grateful to him uh, for the time he gave me and I hope you will enjoy this episode from my interview with Abbot Seraphim. I think uh, I think it's a good question, and and I run into this all the time. Uh, our young men come in and they read the Desert Fathers, or they read Saint Isaac the Syrian, and they realize they're very very far from that. Uh, and they see this in the lives of the saints, and you know they feel very discouraged and sometimes even despondent over that. I'm not living like that. I've never lived like that. They say. And how can I possibly live like that? And over the years, I've come to realize um, what I think is, is very important for us all to realize, and that is that we are, we are a damaged culture and a damaged people. Um, and the younger people are even more damaged for all the obvious reasons. Uh, you know, they've grown up in a in a society with, with computers and video games and uh, I have young men coming in who are addicted to video games and addicted to pornography and they have no social life at all. Everything is on, on their, their iPhone. Um, this is really tragic but not impossible. Um, I, I firmly believe that our Savior uh, calls these people also to monastic life and he calls them to a Christian life. I think in a sense it's easier for them to become a monastic than to try to live in the world and really um, maintain a Christian life that is free of these addictions that are so plaguing uh, mostly the men in our society. Um, because in the monastery, their iPhones are taken away, the computer's taken away, so that eliminates, and they have no access to it at all, that eliminates that, but then they're left with, well, what do I do with myself all day long? Uh, how do I spend my time? Um, most of them aren't used to reading books, they don't pick up books, they look at things on the internet, but they don't pick up books. So they have to learn how to pick up books and to read, we have a novice reading list for them. They have to pick up their prayer book and read. They have to use their chotki and say the Jesus prayer. And they have to learn how to spend their time uh, away from their addictions. And that's hard for them to do. It's very hard for them to pay attention uh, at private prayer or liturgical prayer. It's very, very hard for them. And the conclusion I've come to is that um, our Savior is all merciful. He knows how damaged and broken the young people are today. He doesn't stop loving them. He doesn't give up on them. And so we can't give up on them either. We have to help them to recover from this. Um, and the first thing to, that helps in the healing is to realize what a problem it is. It's so commonplace in our society that um, most people don't think anything about it. But when they come to the monastery and they talk to me about it, you know, I say, this is, this is really a problem. It's not insurmountable, but this is a serious problem that we have to deal with. Whether you're going to be a monk or you're not going to be a monk, we have to deal with this. It's easier if, they want, if, they, if God calls them and they want to become a monk because um, it, it's much easier to just separate them from, from the technology that's leading to their corruption. Um, but if they're in the world, then it's much more difficult. If, if they choose to stay in the world, it's much more difficult. But I do believe, in a sense, that we're the monks of the last days, 
And even though we are not um, great ascetics at all, um, what we're fighting against is something that monks before us have never had to fight against. I believe that we are living in the most corrupt society that Christianity has ever known. I realize that's very radical to say, but if you just look at just look at pornography alone, even in pagan Rome, they had to go somewhere to partake in in satisfying their carnal pleasures. Today, our young people don't have to do. Our older people don't have to do it. They just pick up their their iPhone or their computer, and this is this is just pull the ground out from underneath the spiritual life of many, many, many young men and and adults in our society. So the corruption is is devastating to the spiritual life, uh, especially of the men in our culture. It really is. W women is a whole, women is a whole other issue. I mean, the way women, women dress today and how they're what they're taught is fashionable. When I was a young fellow, uh, an old man, when I was a young fellow, if a woman dressed that way, walked on the street, the police probably would have arrested her because they would have thought that she was a prostitute. So we're living in a, in a very, very uh, corrupt culture, and and this has to be addressed in the monasteries and people um, who approach monasticism. They have to deal with the way this has affected them, and God in his compassion uh, reaches down and raises them up. Um, it's a difficult road for them. Um, I think that um, young people today, they're not going to be like the stylites or the cave dwellers. They don't have the stamina for that. Um, but we work with them and try to develop a prayer rule that's doable for them, trying to get them to just pay attention just for a few minutes when you go to church or when you begin your prayer rule. That's, that's a real challenge for them. But they're damaged and broken, and the fact that they have a desire in their heart to seek God, especially as a monastic, to give their whole life to him, I think is wonderful and thrilling. I'm happy to see it. Um, it's hard to believe they've come through this society, this culture, and they have that desire for God. And I want to do everything I can to help them to achieve that. But it takes a lot of work on their part. Hi again, hope you enjoyed this episode from my interview with Abbot Seraphim. Please subscribe to get notified when new videos become available. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider becoming a patron of uh, this channel. Uh, there's a link to the patronage program below this video. Thanks so much for your support, and we'll see you soon.